So they've consolidated all the profiles for Space Marine bolt rifles, and now they're both heavy and assault weapons apparently. We're going to have Terminator assault cannons spitting out mortal wounds, and Twin Links weapons are back in the game giving us wound rerolls. Let's talk about a rather chunky preview of weapons from 10th edition. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're taking a look at yet another Games Workshop 10th edition preview, and this one's giving us a little bit more information on the various flavours of weapons in Warhammer 40k 10th. We have already had a fair amount of hints as to how some of them would work, but we've seen rather a lot of keywords that hadn't been explained yet, and continuing with our gradual preview of the new rules, they've given us a whole taste of different types of weapons and how they're going to be functioning. So far we've been told a number of themes about 10th edition weapons. On the data sheets, we've got the number of attacks and ballistic skill and weapon skill included within the profile itself rather than being listed up at the top of the datasheet. It kind of helps for keeping things similar between range and melee weapons. I guess it makes sense seeing as they're always going to be using those profiles. Where previously we just had a few classes of weapon in Warhammer 40k, things like assault, pistol and heavy weapons. Those ones have been joined by a bunch of things that add quite a lot more rules to the weapons, and plus they can be combined in more unusual ways now. Previously, I feel like the 9th edition rules were just a bit restrictive in that every single weapon had to either be assault or rapid fire or heavy. It's kind of weird that the Votan Hunter weapons had to be their own class, despite basically having no special rules whatsoever. It is kind of interesting that it looks like we can actually mix multiple different classes of weapons on the same thing now, such as the Spine Fists being assault pistol weapons on the Tyranid Gaunts, and now apparently Space Marine Bolt Rifles being assault heavy weapons, which seems like a bit of a contradiction in terms. We had a few of the keywords clarified. We know that rapid fire weapons are broadly similar, they get a specified number of extra attacks at half range. I feel like most of the time that will be the normal double attacks, but it does give them a bit more freedom to play around with it a bit. Things like the Orc Daka weapons could now be counted as rapid fire weapons. Otherwise we've seen a bunch of weapon effects as well. Things like the anti-rule, like the anti-vehicle chain fist to auto wound vehicles on a certain amount. I feel like we'll probably see a few more of those, maybe things like Drukari Poison. Finally on the numbers themselves, they have told us there's going to be a fair few trends in 10. For the most part it looks like anti-tank weapon strength is going up a bit, but anti-infantry stuff is broadly staying the same. That's all to do with the stretching of the toughness system to try and make vehicles a bit more impervious to small arms. And quite a lot of weapons have got slightly less AP than they used to have previously, such as the power fist going down from AP3 to AP2. Finally we also know that different weapons will have different profiles for different units. Say for example a Meltagon might have a different profile depending on whether it's mounted on a vehicle or carried by an infantry trooper. That was something that they specifically called out. Let's go through their new examples though, and first up we have the trusty Space Marine Bolt Rifle. This one gives us an interesting teaser of both the assault and heavy weapons, both of which have changed. But I feel like for the Bolt Rifle itself, perhaps the biggest news is that they've made the three different variants of Bolt Rifle all into the same one profile. Currently as it stands at the moment you have the option for the auto bolt rifles, the regular ones and the stalker ones, all of which have very slightly different profiles compared with the standard ones, being more anti-infantry or anti-heavies. It looks like all of those are being consolidated into one profile, so I guess your space marines are just a little bit less easy to customise to take down a specific target, but I must admit I feel like this one is a big win just from a quality of life and a what you see is what you get perspective. A lot of these variant profiles kind of felt like a way that Games Workshop just wanted to sell you more intercessors. Maybe in their world they wanted every player to have a squad of intercessors with the heavy weapons and the assault ones and the rapid fire ones, depending on which ones you wanted to field. Realistically, no one would really want to do that. The cosmetic differences between the guns is pretty tiny to be honest, things like some scopes and magazines. So I feel like consolidating them all into one profile is a pretty good move on Games Workshop's part, I feel like they were very commonly proxied as different weapon types. It does perhaps imply that we might get similar sort of things for things like the Hell Blasters, with the slight variants in the plasma rifle weapons, and maybe the heavy intercessors as well, who also had variant bolt rifles. Next up, I think it's pretty interesting that these both get the assault tag and the heavy tag. Looks like the standard bolt rifle isn't using rapid fire anymore. And I do kind of find it interesting that weapons could be both assault and heavy at the same time now. In general in 40k they've usually been a bit of a contradiction, either it's so heavy that you struggle to log it around, or it's light enough that you can move and fire it without really thinking too much about it. 
but it seems like they're both on the same model now. Games Workshop's article seemed to say that they wanted to represent it being able to fire the different ammo types and different rifle modes. To be honest though, the rules seemed kind of sensible. It would reward rifles both for being able to move around fairly quickly and also gain a bit of extra damage if you're standing still as well. Both the assault and the heavy weapon rules have changed. It looks like the assault rule now no longer gives you a minus one to hit when you're advancing and firing your weapon. It perhaps removes one decision from assault weapon units. Now I feel like advancing is going to be the default literally every single turn unless you have a good reason not to. Say if you wanted to make a charge or if you had another weapon rule that meant that you didn't want to. Like having the heavy weapon rule which gives you best of ballistic skill if you stay still now. I guess that means that space marines are going to be moving just a little bit quicker around the table. Usually going to be able to move 6 inches and advance. And they'll still be putting out decent firepower with decent accuracy. Next up it looks like they've reframed the heavy weapon rule as well. I'd argue that the broad effect of this one is perhaps kind of similar. But now the rule is that if you remain stationary in the movement phase then you get to add plus one to the ballistic skill of your weapon. So it looks like these standard space marines will be hitting on a two plus with the bolt rifles if they are standing static. It doesn't look like there's any exception for the heavy weapons on vehicles and things. It will be interesting to see if vehicle heavy weapons also pick up this penalty. That will perhaps make it a bit more of a decision as to whether or not you're moving your vehicles around the table or trying to keep them static for better firing positions. I feel like the effect for a bunch of infantry units is going to be fairly similar. You'd be going between a 2 plus and a 3 plus for space marines depending on whether you move or it'd be a 3 plus to 4 plus under the old system. It does potentially have some interesting things that it throws up though. Any heavy weapons are going to be a bit underwhelming on things that already hit on a 2 plus. There won't be any incentives to stay still with them unless you're taking a different modifier. But also for the majority of units that are moving around the board firing heavy weapons, in 9th edition at least, it meant that you could maybe move and fire a heavy weapon and then basically take aim at a plane or a unit in dense cover and not have any additional minus 1 to hit as you'd already taken the minus 1 to hit for moving and firing and modifiers don't stack at least as we know at the moment. Under this new system though, it means that if you move and fire your heavy weapon, you still will be taking a modifier if you're firing at flyers or dense cover. That does feel maybe like some slightly better game design, as it was a bit of a weird gamey thing that's meant that they couldn't take the penalty before. Overall, both kind of interesting. Assault weapons certainly seem a bit simpler, and it looks like it's a very powerful keyword if you can get it. The heavy one can potentially give you a big direct increase to damage output, I suppose. I feel like having some benefits and trade-offs between moving or standing still perhaps isn't the worst. Might add a little bit more power to positioning your units well in the first place. Finally we have the actual stats for the bolt rifle which have changed a bit. The previous profile was rapid fire 1 at 30 inch range, strength 4, AP minus 1 and damage 1. Bolter discipline would often mean that they could have fired 2 shots out of 30 inch range if they stayed still. This new profile maybe gets a similar sort of job done, but in a very different way. It's only 24 inch range, but you can now move and fire it with no real penalty. And you get two shots up to this range, even without staying still. The base stats are still strength 4, AP 1 and damage 1. And it also gain the plus 1 to hit if you're static. Overall does seem pretty decent in general purpose. You'll be able to move very fast if you do want to be moving around with it, with the assault rule. And if you do want to sit and shoot, then that becomes more powerful as well. Overall seems like quite a nice fitting profile for the bolter. I'll be interested to hear what you guys think though down in the comments. I'd say that that one was maybe the single most interesting preview from all of this, but they have given us the preview of a whole bunch of extra weapons as well, some of which again show up interesting stuff. First up we've got the assault cannon which we had already seen the profile for, 6 shots at 24 inches, hitting on 3s and strength 6. It no longer has the AP-1 that it does in 9th. The interesting thing about this one is that it gained a rule called Devastating Wounds, which I had suspected might be similar to the old rending rules, the one where 6s to wound gave you a bit of extra AP. It does seem that they have gone down this way and even call out the old rending rule in the article. Definitely was a bit of a hallmark of Assault Cannons of yesteryear. Now though, if anything, it seems a little bit more powerful. 6s to wound, also called critical wounds apparently, will now cause one mortal wound and the attack sequence to end. Overall it is just going to make the assault cannon a very nice weapon to use. It's going to be pretty effective against just about anything due to the chance of punching mortal wounds through and just stacking a fair few saves with the volume fire. I feel like with these rules it looks like it might be kind of similar to the utility of Volkite weapons at the moment. Generally pretty helpful no matter what you shoot them at. 
Overall, seems good. Obviously, whether or not it's actually going to be super powerful or not would depend on just how many points it costs. I must admit, at first glance, this one does look particularly brutal. Combined with the Space Marine Oath of Moment, you'd have a lot more chance of fishing for those mortal wounds. Next up, we've got an Eradicator spotted with a Melter Rifle. This one gives us a preview of the Melter Rule, and also a new profile for this gun. The new Melter Rifle is going to be 18 inch range, 1 attack, Ballistic Skull 3 plus, Strength 9, AP 4, and Damage D6. Tags wise, it's got Heavy and the Melter 2 tag. First up, perhaps one of the most notable things is that it lost 6 inches in range. Honestly, I was kind of surprised when Eradicators came out in 9th edition and they somehow had a 24 inch range, the same as a Multi Melter. I feel like somewhere between the Multi Melter and the regular Melter gun seems a lot more appropriate for these. They've gained plus 1 strength, so they'll still be wounding things like Rhinos on a 4 plus, but it looks like Melter weapons will genuinely struggle quite a bit against heavy armor now. Just maybe seems a bit weird that they'll be wounding things like gladiator tanks and repulsors on a 5 when they're supposed to be dedicated anti-armor. I think there's still a few questions from this profile. We don't know whether or not Games Workshop might have consolidated the melter rifle and heavy melter rifle profile. If the bolt is anything to go by then they might have. And I'm sure the eradicators will have some sort of brutal damage rule on their datasheet. I don't know whether they'll still get the shoots twice rule that they have at the moment. That's going to be a big deal for just how potent they are per model. Otherwise though, we do have confirmation on the Melter rule, which basically seems to be broadly unchanged from currently. It's still the same rule where if you're within half range, you get a certain amount more damage. In this case, two, and I would guess that's probably going to be the same for most Melter weapons. So again, just the normal case of if they're up close, they'll just hit you really, really hard, that you might still struggle to wound against some targets. I honestly did expect that Melter guns might get anti-vehicle maybe, maybe an anti-vehicle on a 4+. plus. Seems that that's not the case though. I feel like it might just be a little bit weird if things like Eradicators aren't particularly good against tanks anymore. It does seem to be their main thing. Incidentally, dropping the range down to 18 inches could hurt them a bit if they can be put in reserve. It means that if you dropped 9 inches away, you wouldn't be able to get in melter range. Next up, we've got one Xenos weapon mixed in with all these Space Marine things. The Eldar Shuriken Cannon is here. This one hasn't changed an enormous amount. It's range 24 inches, 3 shots hitting on 3s. Strength 6, AP-1, and damage 2. Though it doesn't seem to have any obvious shuriken rule like it has at the moment. No chance to punch through heavier armour on wound rolls of 6. While I was reading the preview and I read the assault cannons rules, I was thinking that seems quite likely to apply to the shuriken weapons as well, but it would seem not. Instead, this thing gets ignores cover and sustain hits 1. I'm guessing that the ignores cover part of that, though, might well just be on the Dark Reaper datasheet, it is a Dark Reaper that's pictured here, and I feel like Ignore's Cover might be one of their main things. My guess is that Ignore's Cover will be Dark Reaper specific, and Sustained Hits will be generalised. That's the one where you get an extra hit on a hit roll of a 6. Just an outright flat damage boost there. It'll make it a bit more swingy, depending on how many 6s you roll. At least for Dark Reapers, it also doesn't look like it's either a Heavy or Assault weapon. Lastly, for the main weapon previews, we've also got a Twin Linked Weapons profile. This was a keyword that we'd seen mentioned before. It was present on the Termagant Spine Fists, I think. And in the past, this has been through various iterations, re-rolling the hit roll in 7th edition number 4, just getting flat double the shots in 8th edition. And now it seems like that change has been reversed. They'll only get the same amount of shots as basically one of these two twin-linked weapons, but they get to re-roll the wound roll with it to represent the fact that you're firing more stuff at the same target. Overall, just in terms of raw weapon damage, this is going to be a nerf. Say if you had a biker's twin bolt gun firing at the enemy, getting double the amount of shots out of it is always going to be superior to getting the same number of shots out of it and just re-rolling the wound roll. I feel like this one seems like a bit of a slightly weird slanting rule to be honest. It's just kind of strange that twin linked weapons are going to be so much more powerful on light anti-infantry guns compared with heavy anti-tank shots. If you happen to be already wounding your target on a 2 plus for example, then you're going to get almost no extra value out of the big reroll, where you're going to get way more if say you were wounding on a 4. It also could have kind of strange interactions with other buffs going around. Say for example, if you had a lieutenant granting a unit lethal hits and all of their weapons were twin links. Lethal hits is the one where 6s to hit get an auto wound, and that kind of bypasses the main advantage of having twin weapons as you have skipped the wound roll and not given them a chance to come into effect via that buff. Not 100% sure why they went down this route compared with just getting twin weapons. 
I'd guess that these are probably going to be rebalanced a little bit in terms of points to represent their new abilities. It does seem that certain units might just be a fair bit weaker than they were before. Things like maybe twin last cannon Razorbacks. To illustrate the example, Games Workshop have shown us a couple of weapons from the aggressors. They're auto bolt storm gauntlets, both at range and in melee. At range, they now only get the three shots, but get the twin links rule, so they get to re-roll the wounds with them. A little bit worse than the six shots that they got straight away. And at least on this, they don't appear to have the assault keyword, so aggressors might be just a little bit slower if they want to shoot their guns. Otherwise, we've also got a profile for a power fist as well. Apparently they get three attacks with that, which I guess will be one less than currently, what with their shock assault rule. They're the same strength 8, AP 2 and damage 2 as the Terminators. They have the twin links rule as there's two of them, so get to reroll wound rolls. I guess that would really help them punch up against heavier vehicles, I suppose. And finally, I thought it was interesting that they hit on a 4+, plus compared with the Terminators hitting on a 3+. plus. Not sure what that's representing, to be honest. Maybe they're just a bit harder to hit with when they've got big bolt gun straps to them. Overall, I'm not sure I'm 100% sold on these Twin Links weapons being an enormously good change compared with just firing double the shots. It certainly seems kind of fun, but it just feels a bit weird that it's going to be a lot less valuable on really quite high strength things compared with lower strength things. Finally, and to round things off, we've just got one little thing for the Tau Railgun. Apparently it's going to be strength 20, so we'll be wounding every vehicle on a 3+, plus at worst. I guess, judging by Games Workshop's history, if there's ever going to be a gun that's going to be pretty threatening to vehicles, it'll be the railgun, so maybe that's not the worst thing in the world. We'll be interested to see if it ignores invul saves or not this edition. Overall, really quite a lot of previews there though. Let me know what you make of the new Assault and Heavy Weapon rules down in the comments, and what do you make of bolters being consolidated all into one profile. For the most part, the changes do seem pretty good to me. I feel like the twin-linked weapons are the things that I'm least convinced about, but I'm sure it'll add a fun little extra dynamic, even if it is putting a few more rerolls back into the game after Games Workshop has been trying to painstakingly take them out. If you've enjoyed the video and you'd like to see more like this, then feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics, or I'll certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming. I do tend to post new ones just about every day. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that Allspets Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and that's how I can afford to keep on making videos like this quite so often each day. Channel patrons do get a few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with the chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.